Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Coffee Break. My name's Steve Barrett. I'm the editor of Atlanta PR Week. Delighted to be with you for another show. I'm really delighted to be able to chat to Melissa Hochstad, who's the president and CEO of the American Cleaning Institute. And I guess people might, Melissa might regard sort of trade bodies as a little bit dry and dusty. And I know that I know they're not there, but it certainly hasn't been the last 12 months, has it? Because I think everyone is so much more aware of cleaning products generally, but you know, we're hand sanitizing, etc, etc. So welcome to the show. It's great to be able to chat to you. Great. No, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Uh, we're here in Washington, DC. And as you noted, keeping quite busy the last year, and I see another busy year ahead of us as well. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, well, I suppose if anything good does come out of it, there's going to be increased awareness of cleaning products. And, and that's going to be, you know, uh, that's not going to go away anytime soon, is it? So, uh, you know, out of a, a really tough and horrible situation, um, you know, some good has come out of it. But just tell us how you've uh, responded. First of all, tell us where you're, you look like you're in the office. So how have you been coping with the sort of lockdown and everybody working from home and, and making the decision to come back in? Or how, how are you coping with that? Yeah, so like many organizations, the start of last year, everybody was immediately pivoted to working from home. And thank goodness for modern technology. I think that really helped just making sure we were connected and able to do what we needed to do. Then here in Washington, when we got to the fall time frame, we actually started bringing folks back into the office. So we kind of have a, a red team, blue team. So some folks are in the office a couple of days. The rest of the staff is in the office the other days. And it's worked out really well. I mean, I think folks do appreciate technology, but also really appreciate seeing their colleagues back in the office. Yeah, um, clearly it's been a turbulent time in D.C. generally. So uh, how do you keep your staff safe in that environment and just... What were your reactions to the events of, especially of the 6th of January? You know, it was a very frightening uh, insurrection for everyone to watch around the country and the world. But for you being right in the, in the thick of it in D.C., how, do, how have you coped with all that? Yeah, I mean, safety is fundamental. And, and our offices are located about a block from the White House. So uh, thankfully, that particular week, we just weren't sure what was going to happen. So we did have everyone work from home. And I'm very thankful for that. Uh, quite well. frankly, you know, what happened on the 6th, I think that was just devastating. And at the end of it all, democracy prevailed. So I think for me, that was really most important to see. But uh, as you noted, you know, insurrection, absolutely and unacceptable. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's talk about the, the cleaning products industry and how it responded, because it's, you know, at one point we were total, there were shortages of hand sanitizer and, uh, you know, there was big uh, pressure on the supply chain. So as a body that represents all those industries and massive industries, we're talking Lysol, Clorox and P&G, J&J, some of the biggest companies in the country. What did you put into action and, and how were you communicating around the issues that, uh, that the new issues that had come up? Yeah, so first and foremost, what we were really focused in on, especially last March, was making sure that the cleaning products industry was deemed essential by the U.S. government. Of course, that made sure companies could stay open and could manufacture, the employees could get to where they needed to. And as you, you've, you've seen, you know, our companies really ramped up production to 24 seven, and some have even built new facilities in, in quite record time. So for us, it was number one, making sure they could stay open and do what they needed to do. And then with just all the massive changes, you mentioned communications, that was just absolutely critical, making sure we were communicating with members, the news media, consumers, retailers on just what was changing and what they needed to know to make sure they were using our products effectively. Yeah, talk us through, obviously our readers are very interested in that communications angle. With a trade body, you've got your own industry and organizational communication, but then you've got all the big companies and brands doing their own communication as well. So how do you make sure that you're getting a unified message across when you've got so many players involved? Yeah, so for us, number one is making sure we're the voice of the collective industry, really making sure we're representing the $59 billion cleaning products industry here in the U.S. And we really had to prioritize what messaging we needed and with what audiences. And I think right off the bat, we just got a lot of questions about, I'll say, basic uses of cleaning products, things people may have taken for granted before that they really wanted to learn more about. So making sure we had accurate information and then also helping to mitigate some of the fear and correcting inaccurate information that might have been out there to make sure that our members knew and our companies and those that use their products knew what they needed to know when they needed to know it. 
Yeah, I mean, I can't do this interview without asking you about that fateful press conference when uh, President Trump mentioned... Um, so, well, he said he didn't say injecting bleach products. I've read it back. He he did. And then he tried to say he was being sarcastic. But, but whether he was or not, it certainly created a bit of a, a wave, didn't it? And people, there were there were a, a big spike of calls of people saying, well, can I inject bleach? You know, so how did you respond to that when it happened? I, I saw Dr. Fauci the other day. I mean, he couldn't say this at the time, but he was he was just saying what he was thinking at that time. was, oh, goodness gracious me, well, well, how, because uh, this is misinformation that could be really dangerous. How did you respond on behalf of the cleaning products industry? Yeah, so that particular morning, as soon as we heard that, we were right on it in terms of getting the messaging out. That's not how the products intended to be used. Reminding people about proper use of that product. And then you even saw individual companies like RB, who's the maker of Lysol, saying the exact same message. Again, it all comes down to safe use of the products. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I bet you never thought you'd probably have to say, have to make those sort of statements, but uh, life is full of surprises, isn't it? It is indeed, and I think this year, more than anything, keeps us on our toes. It does. Yeah, I liked the way Lysol did it, actually. A very, uh, they used social media very in a very clear, and Clorox, um, you know, they did it in a very, it was perfect use of social media, just to be clear. You should not be ingesting our products, and that that was uh, that was good. We've also seen a lot of other companies um, retool their production. I'm thinking of you know uh, Jim Beam Suntory. We had uh, the head of communications on the show uh, a few months ago, and others, many others, uh, retooling to make hand sanitizer because uh, you know there was such a demand for it. And that's great, but I guess as as an industry body, you've got to make sure that the products these these companies are producing are safe and uh, stick to the regulations and are actually useful. You know, and that it's not wasted effort. Absolutely, and, and for us, you know, you mentioned hand sanitizers, and so we work very closely with the Food and Drug Administration on a lot of the testing and safety and efficacy work to make sure that the products are used the way they're supposed to be used. The FDA has the information that they need. And so it's been so important the last 12 months to continue working with the government agencies, whether it's Food and Drug Administration or Environmental Protection Agency on disinfectant matters, because so much has been changing. You do see a lot of new companies that haven't been involved in the space before getting involved. And so for us, it's really tying back to not only good science, but all about communicating. Yeah. Um, so you talk about uh, influential voices. I mean, I think every marketer and communicator now is very aware of that, the influencer industry. And we saw things like Charlie D'Amelio doing the distance dance and that being an incredibly effective way to get messages across about social distancing. How have you used influential voices uh, to get the message over about clean, you know, good, good uh, cleanliness and, and sanitization? Yeah, I mean, influencers absolutely play a critical role. And for us, it's really about partnering to help broaden the message and expand the message. And it's been everything from bloggers that we're working with that might be able to reach a new community. Or even last year, we had a big event with Good Housekeeping, you know, again, very well known and trusted here in the United States. And it was a, a summit called Discover Cleaning Inside and Out, where we brought together experts from across the industry to really talk about what we know, the do's, the don'ts, answer questions that people might have. But really, partnership is so important because you can't do it alone. Yeah. Taking a step back and maybe reflecting on what we used to think of as normal times, um, what's the role of a trade body in a, in a normal period of time and how do you operate effectively? Because you've got a lot of companies that are competitors competing heavily against each other, but yet obviously they have common um, common interests on lots of issues. And actually I've seen you know, even in if you look at Pepsi and Coke, they are, they are cooperating now on things like packaging and mm -hmm. environmental issues. And, and I assume you're doing the same. Just talk to that a little bit and on how you bring all those very competitive companies and brands together. Yeah, so as a trade association, of course, we're here to represent the collective group. And as you mentioned, sometimes there can be differences in opinions with what different companies may want. So really, we try to focus in on the priorities that are going to be most meaningful as a group. And for us, it's about business, science, communications, and sustainability. So over the last 12 months, there has been a lot of moving parts, but focusing in on especially the regulatory and legislative side, you know, what do our members need to be working on together? whether it's with the agencies or especially with the new administration that is coming in. And then the messaging. I mean, again, that is one area where I think there's been a lot of unified voice in terms of the messaging we've wanted during the COVID situation. And 
really done a lot of good work and built some good momentum for 2021. Yeah, for sure. And you, you mentioned the new administration there. When any new administration comes in, all companies have to learn how to uh, navigate that new administration, especially with this one, because uh, the, there is a very a big difference between this administration and the last. Talk to us in general about how you approach that, but also how you're specifically approaching dealing with the Biden administration after the times of the, of the Trump administration. Yeah, so the one thing at ACI, you know, sometimes you hear, you know, are you Democrat, are you Republican, are you blue, are you red? Really, we're purple. I mean, when it comes to a trade association, that's really fundamentally what you're here for is to be able to work with whomever's in charge, what whatever party, whatever individuals. And so with the Biden administration, what's been really important for us is identifying the new faces that we're really going to have to build relationships with, whether it's at the legislative or regulatory side. And then because ACI has been around for 95 years, we've been doing this a long time. So there are a lot of relationships in place that we can continue to build upon. But this administration will be very different than the last. And we're very excited about it. Are you seeing some familiar faces, given that uh, obviously President Biden worked in the Obama administration and a lot of people have come back who, who were involved before? We are. We, we definitely have seen some of the announcements out there. Uh, for example, the Environmental Protection Agency and related environmental issues. We're seeing individuals we'd worked with in previous administrations. So, yes, a lot of familiar faces coming back to Washington. Now, we hear a lot about the sort of trust deficit and alternative facts, fake news, and how business really has a big role to play here because it's actually one of the more trusted institutions now, you know, compared to the media, compared to government. And those are things that we've got to work on in the media, but obviously politicians have got to work on. As a, as a representative of the business world, I mean, we saw the Business Roundtable make that big statement about 18 months ago about putting purpose on an equal footing with shareholder value. Are you seeing a real move in that direction? Are you seeing business taking more of a responsibility for purposeful activities as well as profit, which, you know, is at the end of the day what most of them are in business for? Yeah, I think one of the things that I've always been really impressed by with the cleaning products industry is that's not something new for them. I mean, it's something over quite a number of years that they've really been making that shift because they know while making profit is very important, there's so many other elements that really go into the business and especially their customers are expecting more of them. So you can't do business the same old way that you may have done it, say, 10 years ago. So I think that shift will just continue to increase, especially as you see more focus on environmental matters, climate, I know, is becoming very prevalent, uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. So these are just things that our industry had been working on and will continue to do so moving forward. And just to finish up, give us a, a flavor of what you think the trends. I mean, we've, we've heard a lot about the future of work and how uh, the workplace. Uh, cleanliness clearly is going to play into that a lot. What are some of the trends that you see, not just in the workplace, but in our general life, course of, of life? Because, you know, when 9-11 when happened, we all got used to new security measures in airports, for example. After this, we're going to have to get used to a lot of other things. In terms of cleanliness, what, what do you see uh, being the new norm? Yeah, I, I think the uptick that we saw, just people even thinking about how they're cleaning, you know, how they're keeping their hands fresh and clean as well, that's going to continue to build. So, I mean, I think the momentum is definitely there. And we really see our role as making sure we're prepared, providing that clarity and direction around proper use, benefits. And also, I think an important thing is what I call targeted hygiene, you know, not over cleaning or doing things too much, but really being smart and using the products the way they're supposed to be. And for us as ACI, it's really about making sure, you know, we built a lot of confidence with the public over the last 12 months. And so making sure we can continue to maintain and strengthen that confidence and trust in the industry and, of course, the products that our industry produces. Yeah, and uh, they've been essential workers, haven't they, producing those products throughout. And uh, a lot of us will forget that, that it's all the people on the factory lines, et cetera, don't have the luxury of, of working from home, and they've been doing a great job getting the products to us. So amen to that and, and good for them. Yeah, I think I, that's the one thing I've just been so incredibly proud of over the last 12 months is just really seeing how much our industry has done to step up to meet the needs of those that use our products and a lot of long hours, but a lot of hard work to make a very important difference. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, Melissa, for telling us more about that. It was great to chat to you and uh, you. let's look toward a time when uh, we'll, be, we'll be all about cleanliness, but in slightly better and more, uh, more engaged in social times. Indeed. And again, thank you for the opportunity today to talk about the, the cleaning products industry and all that we do. Very appreciated. 
not a problem. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you.